from RTO here. Um, welcome to Classic Album with a twist. Okay, today we'll be looking at Marillion's Fugazi. Um, it gives us an opportunity to review the new box set as well. That is initially what this is all about. So what we're going to do today is a little bit different. We're going to talk about the obviously the songs on the album and then I'll talk about the difference because there is a lot of difference um, in this so uh, okay Fugazi was recorded between November 1983 and um, February 1984 at various studios uh, we'll go on to that in a bit why um, it was the first album to feature Ian Mosley the originally came out in 1984 of course uh, and then in 2000 it was remastered and then earlier this year it was remixed completely and that's how we ended up with this okay so what do you get on it well on the first disc you get the 2021 remix of um, Fugazi um, Richard, the original um, production was done by Nick Torber uh, then Peter Mume did the remaster and Andy Brayfield and Avril McIntosh did the 2021 remix Okay, Assassin. Well, as we know, it's got that Middle Eastern start. Uh, but on this, oh, it's so much better. Um, it's probably the best version of Assassin, studio-wise, that I've heard. It's more crisp. It's crisper. The production is fantastic. They've really took this to bits and put it back together. Fantastic version on the here. Guitar. Steve Rothery's guitar solo sounds even better. Okay, Punch and Judy again sounds so much better, especially the keyboards. The keyboards in this remix actually are crisp again. It does sound a lot, lot better, and it's more prominent in the track. Jigsaw beautiful song the vocals on this are far far better absolutely fish crushes it it's great emerald lies um, again it sounds a lot lot better really cleaned it up and got rid of some of that muffly sound on on this album really is a good ver version she chameleon uh, still got still brilliant um, song uh, sounds even better now uh, incubus the guitar solo on this sounds so much better oh and the lyric from Fish on this is even more outstanding. And Fugazi, Fugazi is just Fugazi. It's still, it's still a brilliant track. Uh, the piano in this is more crisper as well. Okay, so that's what you get on disc one. Uh, disc two is part one of a concert recorded at the Spectrum in Canada in 1984 I think some of these songs actually appeared on reel to reel uh, 
So you get Assassin, Punch and Judy, Jigsaw. The Jigsaw version on there is really, really good. Uh, script for a Jester's Tear sounds really good. Chelsea Mundy, not a bad version on that. Uh, Emerald Lies, that is stunning live. Ian Mosley's drumming on that, he's just out the top draw. Then we get Cinderella Search, which is the B-side of Assassin, I believe. Uh, I love that track, and it does sound brilliant. Then on disc three, you get the rest of the concert, and you could probably get the best ever version of charting the single. And the Ian Moses drumming on this. I'm sorry to say blows Mick Pointer out of the park. As much as I like Mick Pointer as a drummer, and he went on to do Arena, uh, this is the best version of that, this song I've got. It's brilliant. He knows you know. Again, the drumming sounds a lot different, and it really adds to the track. Fugazi is brilliant live on here. Uh, Forgotten Sons, again, that drumming is so much more um, deadly, uh, adds to the track atmospherically. Uh, Cinderella, no, we've done Cinderella Search. Garden Party and Market Square Heroes, uh, definitely brilliant, great stuff. Okay, disc four is the Blu ray. And on here we get the surround sound version of Fugazi. Wow. <laughs> That's all I'll say about it. It's wow. You feel like they're playing in your lounge. It really does. You crank it up and you've got our mind set up. Behind me I've got Steve Rothery's guitars in one ear. I've got Pete over here. Um, Ian there and Fish it is probably I mean I've got all these box sets that Marina have put out and this is probably the best surround version I've heard out of all of them it is terrific uh, it totally blew my head away and absolutely fantastic you also get the live in Montreal minus a couple of tracks but uh, the live show that, that as well uh, again it sounds so much better then you get extra what they call the extra audio tracks on the d -ray. but I've actually got them when they did that remaster back at 2000 time you've got these tracks you get an extended version of um, Cinderella Search which is basically the 12 inch version. Assassin Alternative Mix. Now, if you've got the Marillion compilation album, six, one of the six and half a dozen of the other, it appears on that. It's got a different, in that middle bit, it's a little bit, there's an extra keyboard piece in it. I particularly don't like that version. I think the one that you get on the album is far better. Um, then you get uh, Three Boats Down from the Candy, and I do believe this is the version that's got John Marta on the drums. Then you get some demos of Punch and Judy, She Chameleon, Emerald Lies, and Incubus. Um, they're not too bad. You saw where they were coming from. It's nice to hear them. Then we get a documentary. Called the performance has just begun this is really really good it tells the story of after Mick Pointer left and Ian Mosley joining that is fascinating to watch I mean Andy Ward I think would have, if it weren't that Andy Ward was having some health issues I think Andy Ward would have stayed I wonder what that would have sounded like but you know, they went through drummers Jonathan Mover was a little bit cocky apparently uh, John Marta just slagged the band off when they got drunk one night 
and it's quite funny it is it is a proper spinal tap sort of scenario with drummers um, but also as well you can understand why the mix is not as good because at the time the producer Nick Torber was going through a few issues himself personal issues and he was doing drugs and drinking a lot um, and this is why it took so long to record because he was having troubles he was they were running out of studio time I mean the, the guys talk about this and the fish were saying he can't remember which studio was at in the end they were all over the place um, hence why it took so long to record uh, absolutely brilliant little uh, documentary then they go through uh, the story behind each track and I didn't know I mean I, sh I don't know how I didn't know this but Assassin is actually about the sacking of Mick Pointer and when you listen to it it makes sense but they go through each track and how they wrote and what it's about we've got a rough idea you know because Fish always tells us meaning to buzz us about them Polaroids of your girlfriend you know saucy ones uh, Mark Kelly was saying about, about She Chameleon well the studio they recorded in it got a church organ in it so he, he was quite happy to play on that uh, that is really interesting as well then you get the promo video for Assassin which I hadn't watched for years I got it on that video you got with all of them up till uh, the misplaced childhood time uh, it's so good and then you get a show that was reformed in Switzerland for TV in 1984 get a backstage in interview and they look I mean fish looks about 10 it's great but uh, you get um, they perform on stage live uh, assassin punch and Judy jigsaw Cinderella Search, Incubus, Garden Party and Market Square Heroes. Watching this to watching the recital of the script, they'd come on so much. They'd got a better stage presence. So that's this wonderful box set. I mean, as you know, when I did the ranking of them, I this was number four. And I've always liked this album, but for, at last, after 37 years, I think we've got the definitive version of Fugazi. It, it shows what intricate musicians these were, even back in 1984. You hear that more when you listen to it on the surround sound. You pick out little bits that I never had before. Uh, it, it's really tri tricking. Tricking. Really terrific to hear this more Chris in Mosley's drumming on this he's fantastic he is an absolute superb drummer without a doubt am I gonna give it a higher ranking than 9.7 no um, because it's it, it still it will still sit where it is even with this version because obviously I've got the remixes of the others but I'd say this is the probably the best version of this album without a doubt it is absolutely spot on this is if you haven't got this yet go and get it or if you want to listen to the remix it is on Spotify and the concert it's worth listening to um, so that's all we can say about this really good album uh, go out and buy it if you haven't already and if you have got it put in the comments box below what you think of this because I think this as I keep saying this is definitely the definitive version of Fugazi as I when I did the opening up it's got some really cool artwork in here as well um, I mean you get a full picture of the uh, album cover which I've always loved that cover um, and get, get the story of it some really interesting there's even a picture of Marillion with Andy Ward which is pretty cool you don't see many of them but that's the picture with Andy Ward yeah, got, 
uh, their, uh, when they were on tour with Rush in America. Uh, toured with Rush. Why not? Show that would have been Rush and Murillian. Uh, anything else? There's an even better picture of Marillion with Andy Ward. Really, really good. So, enjoy that. It's got all the lyrics, everything. It is really, really good. Okay, that's all I've got today. But uh, also, don't forget there is a poll running for our next artist, what they've done in their career. We're going to do someone from Deep Purple. It's either Ian Gillan, Richie Blackmore, or John Lord. Um, the poll runs up until Thursday. So if you just want to pop who you want me to do in the next series, like we're doing with Paul Rogers, just pop it in the comments box below. And I will announce the winner on Thursday. So that's all for today. I will be back tomorrow. Um, we are doing an album ranking of the solo albums of Mr. Ian Anderson from Jeff Rotel, which is a really good one. There's some interesting stuff in there. And retro ranking tomorrow, we're going back to just retro ranking. I'm going to do my favourite top 10 singles by the fantastic Kim Wilde. Where's uh, one of our, uh, uh, if you're of a certain age, she was a bit of a pin up for us teenage boys. Um, she made some good songs as well, so we'll be looking at her top 10. So that's all for today. So, whatever you're doing, whatever you've done, um, whatever you're doing tomorrow, I'll see you tomorrow. Take care for now.